There is a knife there as well. What? There is a knife if you want. I knew there is. This is something that is more unusual. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth II is one of the most powerful women of our time. The current monarch in 14 independent states, the supreme commander of the British Armed Forces, and the head of the English Church. This video is dedicated to the Pearl of the Windsor Dynasty, the one and only Queen of British Hearts. Elizabeth II how the Queen of Great Britain lives, and how she spends her millions. Princess Elizabeth Alexandra Maria was born on April 21, 1926, in the family of the Duke and Duchess of York during the reign of her grandfather, George V. The baby became the first child in the family and got her name in honor of her mother, Elizabeth Bowes Lyon. At home, the girl was affectionately called Lilibet because that's how she pronounced her name. After four years, she had a younger sister who was named Margaret. After the death of the reigning king and the abdication of Lilibet's uncle, her father took the crown in December 1936, so the baby became a real contender for the throne. Her family settled in Buckingham Palace, where the future queen of Great Britain spent her childhood and youth. The young lady received a brilliant humanitarian education at home, having mastered many necessary disciplines including law, religion, art, and foreign languages. Elizabeth liked to study. People claim that she learned French on her own. She also adored horses and dogs, and she also stood out because of her neatness and responsibility. In 1940, a 14-year-old girl publicly addressed her fellow citizens for the first time via the radio. During the Second War, she expressed support for children who suffered from the war. At the age of 17, Elizabeth performed independently for the first time in front of the Grenadier Guards. A year later, she became one of the five state councillors, thereby gaining the right to perform the functions of the king if necessary. At the beginning of 1945, the girl joined the Women's Self-Defense Unit and later received the rank of lieutenant. She became the first woman from the royal family to complete real military service, learning to drive an ambulance and receiving training to be a mechanic. The love story of young Elizabeth and Prince Philip Mountbatten of Greece and Denmark unfolded during the war. It is noteworthy that the young people were distant relatives to each other, namely, fourth cousins of a common great-grandmother, Queen Victoria. Their first meeting took place when Philip was 13 years old and Elizabeth was only eight. But after five years, the girl looked at her cousin in a completely different light. Together with her sister, she accompanied her father during a visit to the Royal Naval College in Dartmouth, where by coincidence, a handsome young man became their guide. Philip was so charming, good-looking, and devastatingly witty that Elizabeth fell in love with him without looking back. She was especially struck by the healthy appetite of the man. During lunch, he had a lot of shrimp and for dessert, a banana split. Years of correspondence, rare meetings, courtship, and excitement followed. In addition to the war, George VI's uncertainty that Philip was a good match for his daughter was hindering the love story. Firstly, his pedigree was greatly compromised by family scandals. Secondly, he wasn't rich enough. Thirdly, he had a set of very dubious manners. The young man wasn't politically correct, made inappropriate jokes, and very harshly communicated with others. But who can go against true love? And Elizabeth was ready to make any sacrifice on the way to her goal. Therefore, when Philip in 1946 asked the king for permission to marry the heir to the throne, he gave his consent. However, he put forward a condition. The wedding would take place only after the princess came of age. At that time in England, the age of adulthood was considered 21. At the same time, the groom had to renounce not only his orthodox fate and convert to Anglicanism, but also leave behind all available titles while he received the title of Duke of Edinburgh from his future father-in-law. The engagement was officially announced in July 1947, and the ring of the future queen 
was made by jewelers of the famous house Gerard, according to the prince's personal sketch from diamonds taken from his mother's tiara. Philip turned the remaining diamonds into a diamond bracelet, which he handed to the bride as a wedding gift. Shortly before the engagement, on the day she turned 21, the princess solemnly promised to devote her life to the service of the British Empire. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family. This event took place during the royal family's visit to South Africa. Soon the wedding of the princess and Prince Philip took place. Modest by royal standards, the wedding took place on November 20th, 1947. Britain had just brushed off the ashes of the war and was restoring peaceful life bit by bit. So the government was afraid of people's criticism. Life was hard, food and clothes were limited, the economy was going down despite all efforts. But the subjects unexpectedly received the news about the celebration with great joy and enthusiasm and donations for the dress, ingredients for the wedding cake, and congratulation cards were sent to the princess from all over the country. Elizabeth had no right to use the donations that people sent her, so she sewed a wedding dress from fabrics that she bought with her own money and made her own makeup. At the same time, standing at the altar in Westminster Abbey, she was beautiful and was just beaming with happiness. She called Philip an angel, and he, in turn, said that he simply did not deserve such a person as Elizabeth. After the honeymoon, which the young couple spent in Hampshire, Philip continued his service in the English Navy in Malta, and Elizabeth regularly visited him in the unit. A year later, the couple had their first child, Prince Charles, and two years later, Princess Anne. At the same time, in the early 50s, George began to feel worse, so Elizabeth took on the responsibilities of representing Great Britain on the diplomatic world stage. Philip had to leave the service and travel around the world with his wife. Over the next two years, she and her family traveled a lot, and even the news of her father's death caught the princess in distant Kenya. On June 2, 1953, Elizabeth officially became the Queen of Great Britain and the lands belonging to it. Interestingly, the Queen ordered that her descendants belong to the Windsor family, to which Philip complained that he was the only man in the country who was not allowed to give his name to heirs. However, later the Queen did change the children's personal last name to Mountbatten Windsor without changing the dynasty's surname. Elizabeth wanted to have as many children as possible, but the next child, Prince Andrew, appeared only in 1960, and four years later, Prince Edward. The dream of a big, happy family eventually came true, although it was overshadowed by constant rumors about the spouse's infidelities. According to sources, the Queen was aware of Philip's behavior, but accepted everything as it was, believing that this is the nature of all men. And the royal status did not allow her to just kick out an unfaithful husband. As a monarch, Elizabeth not only preserves traditions, but also introduces new practices. Despite her shyness, she decided to broadcast her coronation on television, which led the monarchy into a new era of openness. In 1970, during a tour of Australia and New Zealand, she introduced the practice of royal walks, chatting with ordinary people on the streets of the city. It was under Elizabeth II that the royal fathers began to be present at childbirth. Family members were allowed to marry Catholics and divorces were allowed too. She also put an end to the discriminatory practice of succession to the throne when priority was given to boys, and the queen became the first head of state to use email. During the long years of Elizabeth's reign, she survived several assassination attempts. In 1970, the attackers tried to set up a train accident. In 1981, a New Zealand teenager shot at the queen, but fortunately missed. And shortly before that, a similar case occurred during a national holiday in the UK. But then a 17-year-old young man fired blanks. Elizabeth was on horseback at that moment and was leading a parade, but she was able to quickly recover from the shock and calm the frightened animal that tried to throw off its crown rider. And once her own bodyguard almost shot her. The fact is that one night Elizabeth was tormented by insomnia and she decided to take a little walk around the palace where she came across a vigilant guard. Moreover, 
it is unknown which of the two of them was more scared in that situation. Elizabeth called 1992 her worst year. At that time, the Queen's personal condition was actively discussed in the press, which made the voices of Republicans more and more active. The media was full of headlines about affairs and tense marriages among her extended family. During the Queen's visit to Germany, demonstrators pelted her with eggs, and to top it off, a large fire broke out in Windsor Castle. Elizabeth withstood all these troubles in her usual dignity and solved the scandal with finances by cutting expenses and voluntarily paying income tax. However, the most serious criticism for her entire reign came down on the Queen in 1997, when Princess Diana died. Elizabeth II endured a lot of attacks from the public for restraint and the lack of any public reaction to the death of her former daughter-in-law in the first five days after the tragedy. But the Queen also solved this problem by making a televised address the day before Lady Diana's funeral. However, criticism of the monarchy is still present because according to experts, about $300 million annually goes to expenses related to the royal family. Elizabeth II's personal fortune is estimated by experts at $600 million. It includes investments, a collection of works of art and jewelry, as well as Sandringham Palace in Norfolk and Balmoral Castle inherited by her. As for the residences, Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle, Holyrood Palace in the capital of Scotland, and Hillsborough Castle in Northern Ireland, the current queen is only a temporary owner for the period of her reign. The monarch cannot sell these and other multi-billion dollar riches of the British crown, having only the right to control the wealth. As for the inherited property, the Queen Mother left Elizabeth about $85 million, including many significant works of art. The Queen's late husband, Prince Philip, left a fortune worth about $12 million, including a collection of paintings by Edward Seago, as well as 3,000 books. In addition, the Queen owns a collection of stamps worth $120 million. Interestingly enough, Her Majesty is very successful at betting on horse races. Her horses have won at least 500 competitions. Elizabeth herself has earned about $9 million over 30 years. Her maximum winnings amounted to $775,000. And the British Queen also patronizes more than 600 organizations and charities. And according to experts, has helped raise more than $1.7 billion for them. The monarch has as many as two car parks, which is not surprising. She needs cars for official events and for personal affairs as well. In the first case, there are three Rolls-Royce cars, three Daimlers, and two Bentleys. It is noteworthy that all of them do not have license plates and are called simply in order, for example, Bentley 1 and Bentley 2. For her private moments, the Queen has a Rolls-Royce Phantom 4, which she ordered back in 1950. The next Rolls-Royce went to Elizabeth as a gift from the government for the 25th anniversary of her reign. Her Majesty also has a Land Rover Defender, and this car reminds her of the war years. There are also two Range Rovers in her park. One of them she happily drove around William and Kate, from the other she greeted her subjects standing up. To complete this picture, we need to name a handsome Jaguar and two luxurious Bentleys. Elizabeth decided to give up driving on public roads only in March 2019, after her husband got into an accident. During her entire driving years, the Queen has never been involved in a serious accident and was very law-abiding. Needless to say, driving is the standard for the British Queen. As for the Queen's performance of her duties, here Elizabeth managed to build relations with the cabinet of prime ministers so skillfully that her opinion is very much appreciated among politicians. For example, Margaret Thatcher repeatedly turned to her for advice. The Queen has always been distinguished by her humanity and the ability to understand someone else's pain. So in 1986, during a sea trip, Elizabeth learned about the beginning of a civil war in Yemen. She demanded to change the course of her yacht, Britannia, in order to take on board as many ordinary people as possible from Yemen. Thanks to the Queen's order, more than a thousand people were saved. Elizabeth is spoken of as an open and sociable person with an excellent sense of humor. Perhaps that's why it's so easy for her to win people over. 
At various times, she met with many famous and influential people, such as Marilyn Monroe, Jackie Kennedy. The monarch is no stranger to the art of subtle trolling. Once while walking in the vicinity of her castle, the crown person got into a conversation with Americans, who asked her if she had ever met the queen here, to which Elizabeth, keeping an unperturbed expression on her face, replied, I didn't, but he did, nodding at the officer accompanying her. Although the queen prefers not to stand out on such walks, she is still known as one of the most elegant ladies of our time. She prefers to dress luxuriously, but with restraint. She can often be seen in outfits of blue and light blue shades, and sometimes she chooses bright fuchsia or lemon. Handbags and scarves are a separate passion of hers. A very funny story is connected with the former one. Apparently, the courtiers practice a system of secret signs. If the purse is placed on the table, the meeting is over. If it is put on the floor, then the visitor is just tiring to her. Her Majesty's wardrobe mainly includes the creations of Sam Launer, especially she respects the Traviata model worth from $540. Also, Hunter rubber boots, barber jackets, Doc's raincoats, and luxury Hermes scarves are always at hand. In fairness, we must say that Her Majesty also has fashion failures. One day, she came to an appointment with the Nigerian ambassador and his wife in a cheerful floral dress. The oddity of the situation was that the officials from Nigeria dressed in the same color scheme. Several varieties of roses, strawberries, and even a dish invented specifically for the banquet in honor of Elizabeth's coronation in 1953 are named in her honor. Little is known about the culinary preferences of the monarch herself, except that she follows a low-carb diet, and she prefers to relax with a glass of dry martini or a cocktail of gin and strong French Dubonnet wine. According to people close to the court, the queen always knows her measure and never drinks in the morning or afternoon. But recently, doctors have recommended reducing even the small doses of alcohol that she allows herself. Another symbol of the royal court is the corgi, which Elizabeth doesn't part with. Her Majesty's love for these adorable dogs began in childhood when baby Lilibet saw a corgi at family friends. After that, the girl persistently asked her parents to give her a pet, and in 1933 she had a dookie. Sometimes, he even became the hero of newspaper publications. The puppy looked very cute on a leash with the little princess. A full-length animated film, The Queen's Corgi, was even created based on the friendship of Elizabeth II and these pets. An honor to meet you, ma'am. Royal selfie. Cheesesteak! By the way, the Queen often becomes a character in various films. Her Royal Highness, Queen Elizabeth II. Her image in the cinema is immortalized by such movies as The Naked Gun, King's Speech, Spencer, The Queen, and many others. And in 2012, Elizabeth herself starred in a video dedicated to the opening of the Olympic Games in London. The plot was rather original. James Bond, played by Daniel Craig, meets with the Queen of Great Britain at the palace to bring her to the opening ceremony of the Games. Naturally, it would be boring just to come to the stadium, so the couple gets into a helicopter and later, Her Majesty makes a parachute jump. The following year, at the British Academy of Film and Television Arts Awards for this performance, Elizabeth was named the most memorable Bond girl, and at the same time was awarded an honorary award for patronage of the film industry. The Queen did not stop there, and in June 2022, she starred in a funny sketch with Paddington the Bear. A tea party with a cartoon animal was shown before the start of the celebration in honor of the 70th anniversary of her reign and caused delight among the public. The story of the video is as follows. Due to poor health, 96-year-old Elizabeth could not personally attend the celebration, so the video was shown at the opening, hinting that the Queen was watching what was happening from the window of Buckingham Palace with Paddington. A year before the Platinum Jubilee on the throne, Elizabeth became a widow. She was reportedly at her husband's bedside when he died and admitted that his death left a huge void. Their marriage lasted more than 73 years, becoming the longest royal marriage in world history. Due to the restrictions imposed at that time in England, the Queen sat alone at the memorial service for Philip, 
which aroused the sympathy of people around the world. At the farewell ceremony, she tried to stand firm, and only her trembling hands betrayed her a bit. This incredible lady allowed herself tears only in the car, away from the cameras. The queen pays tribute to her beloved spouse, even in small things. For example, attaching a black mourning pin to a hat. Recently, the Queen of Great Britain has been holding fewer public events and has transferred some of the responsibilities to Prince Charles. However, despite her advanced age and the status of the oldest head of state in the world, she does not intend to abdicate. Moreover, Elizabeth does not consider herself old at all. Last year, she refused to accept the title of Old Lady of the Year, which is awarded by the British Humor magazine for the elderly. The response of the Queen's assistant private secretary read, Her Majesty believes that a person is as old as they feel. Therefore, the Queen does not think that she meets the criteria necessary for this title and hopes that the magazine will find a more worthy recipient. So far, Elizabeth, like the Windsor dynasty, is alive and continues to play a leading role on the world stage. Despite the fact that the constitutional monarchy does not assume the Queen's participation in politics, she still influences the course of history due to her authority and long reign. She is smart and careful, and an iron hand is hidden under a velvet glove. Do you think Prince Charles will become a worthy successor to his mother? If you liked the video, leave a like, and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.